Hi, welcome to business time. I am Melisha. Remember to subscribe, like, and share. Today, we will be looking at investment appraisal. Now, businesses usually invest in capital goods, such as machinery, equipment, buildings, vehicles, tools, you name them. Now, these goods are what the business will use to provide other goods and services. So, from time to time, businesses definitely will have to invest in these goods. Now, businesses may want to invest for several reasons. And some of these reasons could be to replace existing assets, whether the asset that they have, like for example, a, a machine, it's old, it cannot perform its function. And so the business will need to replace it, uh, acquire an additional asset. So the business may be doing well and the business is expanding. And so we'll need to get additional equipment or whatever asset it needs. Or the business could be introducing a new product. And so of course, money will be needed for this to be done or open another branch. So the business is doing so well. And so it's only necessary that the business opens another branch, whether in another parish, another country or wherever. So businesses do invest for various reasons. Now, investment appraisal you may be wondering what is investment appraisal no businesses will need to have an idea of whether the investment or project that they want to go into is worth pursuing because they will be spending a lot of money on these investments or projects and so no business wants to invest put a lot of effort into a project or any kind of investment and then at the end of the day it is not financially viable at the end of the day it's a loss and so that project that investment the business will have to do away with it and so an investment appraisal is a way to help businesses to assess properly if an investment or a project is worth pursuing so it's so important it's a lot of money so a business just cannot um come and say oh i am going to uh let's open another branch but then they have to appraise the investment to see if it makes sense to actually do so now there are several methods that can be used to uh, appraise an investment You have the payback period, the average rate of return, and the net present value. For this video, we are going to be looking at the payback period. Now, the payback period is simply a way of looking at how long it will take for a business to recover the initial cost of the investment. So if to invest in a project, it costs the business, say a million dollars, the business will want to know how long, how many years it's going to take, how many months it's going to take to actually pay or clear off that investment cost so that the business can now realize you know, some, some benefits from the investment so it's how long it will take for the net cash inflows and that's money coming into the business to pay back the original cost of investment and so the business will choose if they're relying on the payback period the business will choose the project that will be that will pay off the initial cost of investment the fastest good All right, so we're going to look at a 
a little example here. So let's say that you're asked to calculate the payback period for this particular project. Now, normally, you'll be required to have your table nicely written up, drawn up. So it should show the year, you look at the column headings, the annual net cash flow, and the cumulative cash flow. Now, of course, you will have year zero and however long, you know, it's going to be. And for your exam, you're normally given how many years. So you don't have to go and figure that out, right? They will tell you in a typical exam question, they will tell you how many years this project will be for. And the annual no net cash flow, these are money that will be monies that will be coming in annually good from this investment so year zero take note that that's a time when the investment would be made so there would be no money coming in right so that cash for the hundred thousand right there in bracket that's that's just the the amount of the initial investment whatever it costs the business to start this investment no year one is the year after the investment and the cash flows for the different years like year one cash flow you see twenty thousand dollars year two fifteen thousand dollars year three twenty six thousand dollars year four thirty thousand dollars year five thirty six thousand dollars those are the annual inflows those are money that are uh, money that's coming in annually all right no for us to be able to calculate the payback period we have to look at the cumulative cash flow which is the sum of the difference between the inflows and the outflows of cash now the inflows you will see here is the annual net cash flow section so it shows the cash that will be coming in right so to get the cumulative cash flows it is the sum of the difference between the inflows and the outflow of cash now all right for the cumulative cash flow take note for zero year meaning that we have not completed a full year and so we will put back a hundred thousand dollars which is the initial cost of investment please remember to put it back in bracket all right that's not a company's money it's not the business's money all right so in year one now we realized that we got um cash inflow of twenty thousand dollars and so a hundred thousand dollars will need to be taken from that inflow of twenty thousand dollars which is not enough and so guess what um we are going to end up with um a balance really of eighty thousand dollars right so take note here one the inflow of twenty thousand dollars is still not enough to cover the initial um investment and so for sure, year one, we would not have paid back that money. And remember to put the remaining $80,000 in bracket because we need to clear that up. So in year two, we see that there is an inflow of $15,000. However, we have $80,000 that we need to clear. To, and that is not enough. And if you take $80,000 or $50,000, guess what? You're going to be left with a balance of $65,000, right? So we're, we're not even halfway there yet. Year three, we got an inflow of $26,000. $65,000, still can't cover it. I mean, we're going to still be left with $39,000 that we'll need to pay, right? You take away that $65,000 from the $26,000, what you have? Mm -hmm. A negative of what? $39,000. We still have not covered the all of the initial investment. 
and we need to do that remember what to put your brackets all right now year four we have an an inflow of thirty thousand dollars now at year four we're close we're close um thirty nine thousand dollars that will leave us with 39 from the 30 that will leave us with a balance of nine thousand dollars that we need to clear so we know that okay in year four we're getting closer and so that will leave us with nine thousand dollars that we still need to clear we need to pay off no you will realize that in year four we have not completed it however the, the complete payment will take place in in year five it's not we got thirty six thousand dollars in year five we're not going to be able to cover every it's not the entire year five that the nine thousand dollars um will be um paid will be covered and so we need to know how many months it will take in year five to actually pay off the initial investment good now we see here that we're gonna have a difference of that nine thousand dollars to 36 from the 36 we're gonna have a difference of twenty seven thousand dollars so take note that the cumulative cash flow only became positive in year five because in year five it would take us a few months to completely pay off that nine thousand dollars all right so that positive amount there in year five does not need to be in any bracket now from what we're seeing we know that it is gonna take four years and some months right and so we are now going to have to learn and know how to calculate the number of months that it is going to take us to um to to pay off so let's look at this formula it is the annual sorry it's the additional cash inflow needed over the annual cash flow times 12 because we want to find how many months all right so so the additional cash flow cash inflow needed let's look um how much was the additional cash flow that's needed right here is the nine thousand dollars that is going to be needed to cover that's going to be needed to cover that we're going to need to cover in year five right so we would put the nine thousand here because that's the additional cash inflow needed right and what's the addition the annual cash flow for that year so the annual cash flow for year five right here that we're going to need to find out how many months payment can come out of this is thirty six thousand so we put uh divide by thirty six thousand and remember we're to multiply by twelve if you work that out, use it, go to your calculators. What did you get? It is three. So that means that in year five, it's going to take three months to pay off, pay off um, the initial investment. So the payback, so we can write here, the payback period will be four years and three months all right excellent all right so this is how you will um calculate the payback period and so this is the very first you'll remember this is just one of the methods one of the ways to do an investment appraisal the pay back period hope you learned something see you next time